to look at the linear supply function. Uh, again, we've already done the linear demand function, and this is going to be very similar, so uh, it, it shouldn't be too difficult. So uh, let's just go ahead and start by writing out uh, how economists will uh, write out the linear supply function. So we have the quantity supplied, that's the variable that we're going to be looking for, uh, equals C, which is going to be our x-intercept, and we talked about why it's x-intercept in, instead of y-intercept uh, when we talked about demand functions, but C plus uh, D times the price. Okay, so let's just uh, go over this again. This is our x-intercept. That's where it, whatever this number is, is going to be where it intersects the x-axis. Okay, uh, the D is the slope, and P is the price. Okay, so what we're going to be doing when we plot this out is uh, we're going to plug in a price here. These two will be given, the x-intercept and the slope will be given, and that will give us the quantity supplied. All right, now, one other note real quick is that if you notice that there's a plus sign in front of the slope, and so what does that tell you? All right, it should tell you one definite thing, uh, and that is that it is an upward <coughs> excuse me, an upward sloping curve. All right, it's a positive slope. So uh, let's go ahead and plot some of these out. And so let's take an example. All right. Uh, so let's pretend that we have, let's not pretend, let's actually do it. Uh, the function, the quantity supplied equals negative 30 plus 20p. Okay. So, this equation here, this function here, represents a line somewhere on this graph, okay, and our job is to figure out how to plot the points uh, so we can draw this uh, supply curve. So, uh, let's go ahead and plot out the coordinates here. So, we're going to have the price on one axis and the quantity on quantity supplied on the other. And again, all we're going to do is plug numbers in and get the points on the on the graph. So uh, again, the easiest thing to do always is to start with a price of zero. And this is in dollars. Uh, so if the price is zero, if we plug a zero in up here for the price is, that makes that zero. So our quantity supplied is going to be negative 30. Now, when you look at that, can you have an, a minus 30 quantity supplied? And the answer is no. If, if, if you have zero, you have zero. You can't have less than zero supply. So, uh, but this will give us, this would be a point on our on our line. All right, so uh, let's just keep going. We know that this quantity supplied number is going to have to be positive. All right, and that's that's what's going to concern us here. So uh, let's put two dollars in. And so if we put two dollars in up here for the price, uh, then we're going to get two times twenty, which is forty. So we would have minus thirty plus forty, which is plus ten. So at two dollars, we know that they will give us ten units. That would be the quantity supplied. I don't need to put a plus there. Uh, how about at four units? What would the quantity supplied be? I'm sorry, at four dollars. So four dollars, if we plug it in up here for the P, 20 times four is 80, and 80 plus a negative 30 gives us 50, and we can do three more. Uh, at six dollars, what would be the quantity supplied? Well, six times 20 we substitute the 6 for the P here. 6 times 20 is 120. Minus 30 is 90. And then we have $8. At a price of $8, how much would be supplied? So we come up here. 8 times 20 is 160. Minus 30 is 130. And finally, uh, if the price is $10, we can come up here. 20 times 10 is 200. Minus 30. So that's 170. <coughs> So again, what have what have we created here? What is what is this called that we know from dealing with demand and when we learned about the law of supply? All right, hopefully you looked at it and instantly thought that this is a supply schedule. All right, so we've created a supply schedule based on uh, this linear function, this linear supply function. All right, so now all we want to do is plot the points. So uh, I'm going to do this just for this one. Uh, we'll plot the negative. So the price of zero, we need to go to negative 30. And so negative is over here on the left. So we've got 10, 20, 30. So this is where that point would be. 
And again, we're not really concerned about that because we can't have negative quantity. All right, so let's go to $2. So at $2, people want, they'll supply, I'm sorry, 10. All right, at $4, they will supply 50. And again, ask yourself, why are they supplying more as the price is going up? This goes back to the law of supply and the tutoring example that we talked about, and that is because there is a profit motive. Uh, they're going to make more money as the price rises, so they're willing to do more and give us more. So, oops, uh, <coughs> at a price of $6, they will produce 90, so we come over here to 6 and come across until we hit 90, which is there. Then at a price of $8, it's 130, so come across until we hit there. And at a price of $10, it's going to be 170 So come across until you hit that. All right, and so this, these are all the dots. Okay, these dots represent points from this supply schedule. And then all we need to do is to put those dots, connect them all together. All right, and I'm going to go right up to the y-axis. All right, that's close enough. And so now we can say uh, at a price of, you know, five bucks, you know, how much would be supplied. And then we can come over. And so this gives us all that information. All right. So now we want to do a couple of different things with this. And we would want to label that supply one. Okay. So uh, we want to do, manipulate this in a couple of ways. So the first is what happens if this number changes? All right. If this number becomes uh, 10. All right, what's going to happen to, to this line? What's that line going to look like? And if you recall from the last, when we did the demand function video, uh, we talked about the parent function. And so this is just going to shift the line. If it's, if it's a bigger number, it's going to shift this whole line to the right. If it's a smaller number, it's going to shift that whole line to the left. And so uh, let's just plug it in real quick. This, I'll try not to make this take too long here. Uh, but if we have the quantity supplied and our new function is 10 plus 20p. All right, so we'll come over here. We can disregard this because we have a new one. So 10 plus 20p, so at zero, at a price of zero, our quantity supplied is 10. At a price of two, our quantity supplied is 50. At a price of four, our quantity supplied, so 20 times four is 80, plus 10 is 90. And at a price of six, it'd be 130. At a price of eight, It'd be 170, and at a price of 10, it would be 210. Uh, again, I'm just substituting the price in here uh, and coming up with the quantity supplied. And so, uh, I'll take. Let me plot two of these points because remember, you only really need the two points to plot the whole curve. So, uh, at a price of zero, we're at 10. So that's there. Uh, let's just put, pick six dollars. So at a price of six, we're at 130. So six and one. 30. All right, so we got the two points, and we can draw that line as well. Let's get a, another color here. And so it would look something like that. All right, and that would be uh, the new supply curve. And again, this is, just to make this point, this is a shift. This is when, what, well, let me ask you this, what would cause this curve to shift to the right or shift to the left. Okay, we can numerically see that, that it's happening, but what would cause that, and that's when the, the cause of, of any kind of shift of the supply curve is a change in one of those determinants of supply that we talked about. So uh, when one of, those, one of those supply determinants changes, it's going to impact this number. It's going to shift it one way or another. All right, uh, one more thing to do. Uh, we want to look at the slope. So let me clean this mess up just a bit. And we want to see what's going to happen when the, the slope changes. All right. And so uh, let's get a new equation. And we'll go back to purple here. So instead of 20, uh, let's make it negative 30 plus about 10p. All right. So what's going to happen if this slope number gets smaller? Is the line going to get more flat or more vertical. And just for futures uh, reference, instead of saying flat, we're going to start to say more elastic. Okay, And 
as we get more vertical, that's going to be called inelastic. And we'll get to that oops, uh, soon. All right, so we've got uh, QS equals negative 30 plus 10P. So uh, we've got 0 and minus 30. That stays the same. At $2, we've got minus 30 plus 10 times 2, which is 20. So we're at minus 10. At $4, that's minus 30 plus 10 times 4, which is minus 30 plus 40, which is 10. At 6, that would be 30. At 8, that would be 50. And at 10, that would be 70. So let's plot these points out. How about we use this interesting color? Uh, so at 0, it's minus 30 again, so we're over here, and we don't, again, we're not going to worry about it if it's a negative quantity. So uh, here's another negative quantity, so that's not going to be part of it, but let's just go ahead and show you where that would be. 10 and $2 and negative 10, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, at $4, they will provide 10. At $6, they will produce 30. At eight dollars, they'll produce fifty, and at ten dollars, they will produce seventy. Okay, and then we can connect those dots. Oh, not like that. Uh, we can connect the dots, hopefully, and this is what our supply curve would look like. All right, let's go ahead and label that uh, S. Three. We had this was our S2, and so as you can see, as the number gets smaller here, the slope, uh, or the the pitch or the angle of the supply curve gets steeper and more inelastic. So when we manipulate this and take this number down, it starts to get steeper. Uh, if we took this number up and made it say 50, uh, then the it's going to flatten out, and it's all going to flatten out from this spot here. All right. So, uh, that is a linear supply function. Let's just uh, review real quick uh, what we did. Uh, the linear supply function is written QS equals C plus PD uh, times the price. The C represents the x-intercept. That's down here. Uh, the D represents the slope of the curve, and P is the price. Uh, we took the, this example, negative 30 plus 20P, and we plotted some points out for it. Uh, starting with 0 is the price, and then we plug the 0 in for the P. So 0 and negative 30, 2, negative 10. We calculated all those numbers, and we drew this. This is our first line uh, that we drew, and then we plotted the points out. All right, And then we manipulated this x-intercept, and we noticed that if it moves, if this number increases, the curve is, it's a shift to the right of the whole curve. Uh, it stays parallel. And if this decreases, if this went to negative 50, the whole curve would shift back to the left. Okay. We also manipulated the uh, slope of the, the curve. As this number went down, the, the slope of the curve became more dramatic. It, it became steeper, more inelastic. If this number goes up, it becomes much more elastic and more flat. Uh, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, until next time.